Our scripture this morning is taken from the book of Numbers. <laughs> book of Numbers, the 10th chapter. 10th chapter, reading the first through the 12th verse. And again, I'm reading from the standard Hebrew translation, the Tanakh. Book of Numbers, the 10th chapter, reading the first through the 12th verse. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, have two silver trumpets made, make them of hammered work. They shall serve you to summon the community and to set the divisions in motion. When both are blown in long blasts, the whole community shall assemble before you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And if only one is blown, the chieftains, heads of Israel's contingents, shall assemble before you. But when you sound short blasts, the divisions encamped on the east shall move forward. And when you sound short blasts a second time, those encamped on the south shall move forward. The short blast shall be blown, setting them in motion. While to convoke the congregation, you shall blow long blasts, not short ones. The trumpet shall be blown by Aaron's sons, the priests. They shall be for you an institution for all time throughout the ages. When you are at war in your land against your, an aggressor who attacks you, you shall sound short blasts on trumpets that they may be remembered before the Lord your God and be delivered from your enemies. And on your joyous occasions, your fixed festivals and new moon days, you shall sound the trumpets over your burnt offerings and your sacrifices of well-being. They shall be a reminder of you before your God. I, the Lord, am your God. In the second year, on the twentieth day of the second month, the cloud lifted from the tabernacle of the path, and the Israelites set out on their journeys from the wilderness of Sinai. The cloud came to rest in the wilderness of Paran. And thus ends the reading of the book of Numbers, the tenth chapter, reading the first through the twelfth verse. Again, I say good morning to you. So happy to have you joining us this morning. Really today, I only have a couple of things to bring to our attention. I want to continue to remember Nate Tanner, who is in the hospital, doing much better, improving every day. We're so happy to, to know that he's improving. We're continuously praying for him. We thank Sister Mary and Sister Brenda Allen for the food giveaway that was on Friday. Several of the members were able to come by and I was able to wave at them. So good to be able just to see you every now and then. Sister Gwen came by this morning and was able to wave at her as well. We're so happy to be able to see you when we can. Amen. Happy to have with us this morning Sister Lydia and Miss Lisa with us today. Amen. You know, we're, we're every now and then we, we get a couple of extra voices in and they're coming in today harmonizing with Claire Reese. It's just wonderful, isn't it? Amen. Amen. All right, get your phone, take out your phone, go to your Givelify app. If you aren't able to access the app on your phone, then you can access it through our website, which is mineolivabz.net. That's going up on the screen. We thank, we're continuously thankful for all of those who are either mailing in their offerings or have dropped them off in our mailbox. We're so thankful for your continued support. Trustees want us to remind you about the trustee day, which is coming up in August. If you don't, do not know who your captain is, you can go either to the website or our Facebook page to receive information concerning the trustee day. Amen. If you haven't mailed your envelopes or haven't dropped them off, you can either 
who I say called Charles and myself, but we know Mary's going to go by and pick him up for you, but we're thankful for you and for your continued support of the church. Amen. <laughs>
pick out something and I need to make this announcement. I received this text oh, early this morning. Mrs. Joyner's 91st birthday is Friday. We know we normally celebrate her birthday, but we can't do, we can't join with her as we normally would. But they're having a drive-by celebration for her at the Park Life Center. Um, well, as it says, um, there, there'll be a flyer. Hmm? There'll be a flyer in the um, group page. You'll be a flyer on the on the on the Facebook yes. page. Yes. All right, there'll be a flyer on the Facebook page. If you would go to that, this is going to be Friday at 6.30. You can just drive by and wave at her and drop off presents. But we want to be sure to celebrate her 91st birthday. She and I have a, have a pack together. And I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> but we want to be able to celebrate her birthday on Friday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. From the book of Numbers, book of Numbers, the 10th chapter, and the 11th verse. The book of Numbers, the 10th chapter and the 11th verse. Again, reading from Tanakh. In the second year, on the 20th day of the second month, the cloud lifted from the tabernacle of the pack. In the second year, on the 20th day of the second month, the cloud lifted from the tabernacle the pack. Title of today's sermon, In the Very Presence of God. In the Very Presence of God. Now we used this scripture just a couple of weeks ago as a background to what was happening in the 11th chapter. And we use it again today in that same way. When we used it a couple of weeks ago, we used it to discuss our purpose of being in the wilderness. I said that God brings us in the wilderness for a specific purpose. And that purpose is threefold. One, to grow spiritually and to learn of God. Two, to learn patience. And three, to learn to trust God. Now today I want us to see something different about what's going on in the 11th chapter. Now we remember that the riff, we remember what the riffraff were doing. They stirred up all kinds of trouble and caused the people to reject God in their desire to return to Egypt. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a very flimsy reason to reject God. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting here that there is ever a good reason to reject God, but what you can but, but what if you can reject God? over cucumbers, melons, leeks, and onions. If you reject God over those things, what else will you reject God for? Not only did they reject God over cucumbers, melons, leeks, and onions, they rejected the provision that God gave to sustain their lives. God was providing them manna every day to sustain their lives to give them everything that they needed to make the journey through the wilderness. But they rejected that in favor of returning to slavery in Egypt, just to have me. And here's another strange thing. 
It's not like God would not have given them me if they had gone to God properly. Again, we need to know God's promises for our lives. If we would love God, obey God's commands, and give our total lives to God, God promised to give us the desires of our hearts. Psalm 37, 4 says that if we delight ourselves in the Lord, God would give us the desires of our heart. It's not that God wouldn't have provided meat for them, but it's that they allowed complaints against God to arise up within them. And then they sought not God's desire in their hearts, but their own desire. And whenever you seek your own desires instead of God, then you are rejecting God and what God is providing for your life. This is what Israel did. God was providing all that they needed to sustain their lives, but they didn't want that. <laughs> they wanted to go back to Egypt for meat. And in their desire, a desire that arose in their own hearts, not for God, but for themselves, they rejected God. And as we remember, many of them died. We don't know how many, but many died at a place called Kilbrah Hatatabah because the people had a crazy and were buried there. Now here's what I want us, to, here's what I want to show you today concerning our text. All of this complaining in the 11th chapter. All in all of this whining and drama, all of this desire to return to Egypt and their rejection of God, all of this took place in the very presence of God. Now, when I say the very presence of God, I'm not talking about omnipotent. Excuse me, I'm not talking about omnipresence. Mm -hmm. The doctrine that God is everywhere at all times. I'm not talking about that. That doctrine isn't found in Numbers, and in fact, it doesn't even appear in Scripture until much later when we get into the prophets. When I say the very presence of God, I'm saying that God was physically, to the extent that God can be physical, God was physically present with them while they were doing all of this complaining and rejecting of God. Listen to the words of our text in chapter 10, verse 11. In the second year, on the 20th day of the second month, the cloud lifted from the tabernacle of the pack. And what I really want us to focus on are these words in that verse. The cloud lifted from the tabernacle. Say it again. The cloud lifted from the tabernacle. If you remember the story, not just in their exodus from Egypt, but during their whole time in the wilderness, even in their wandering for 40 years because of their sin, God led the people by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of cloud by night wasn't an angel or any other type of heavenly being, but it was actually the presence of God which was in that cloud. And when they would stop their, and stop their travels in order to camp, Aaron would have the Levites to set up the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle was completed, when it was set up, God's presence in the cloud would literally come and sit over the tabernacle. The tabernacle was set up in the middle of the camp. And as it tells us in the second chapter of Numbers, the other tribes were set up in a square around the tabernacle. Numbers speaks of these as military divisions, 
But there were three tribes each situated on the north, the south, the east, and the west. They were situated around the tabernacle with the very presence of God in the middle of the camp, sitting on the tabernacle. So when I say that the very presence of God was with them, I mean that God was literally there. If they would only look, God was right there. At no time could you not see this big cloud hovering over the tabernacle. So if God was physically right there with them, it took a whole lot of nerve for the riffraff to stir up that much trouble over some cucumbers, some melons, leeks, onions, and meat. That took a whole lot of nerve to cause the people to reject God and what God was providing for them when God was physically right in front of them. Normally, we would think of God being up in heaven somewhere watching what the people were doing, but not this time. God was literally right there. And if they would do all of this with God being right there with them, what will we do when we believe that God is off in heaven somewhere? I said before, we forget that God is watching us. Even in God's heaven, God can see everything that we're doing. But we don't think about that because we can't physically see God. Sometimes we treat God like we treat each other. You know how we do. We look, we turn, we look to see if anyone is there, if anyone is watching us before we do whatever it is that we plan on doing. And we know it's wrong. That's why we have to look around to see if anyone is watching us and anyone is looking. When we're trying to see in all of that looking and turning around if we're going to get caught. And as long as we don't see anyone, then we'll sneak off to do whatever it is that we're trying to do. But just because we don't see anyone, that doesn't mean that no one is seeing us. Somebody is always seeing what we do. And when no one else is watching, God sees what you do. Yet, somehow we think we're hiding as if we're getting away with something. <laughs> that was Adam's problem. Adam was hiding because he had disobeyed God and he knew that he was wrong. So he believed that he could hide from God. You know the story. God came calling, Adam, where are you? Adam was hiding and God calls to ask where Adam is. But we misunderstand the question. We think the question is directional as if God is asking where Adam physically is. But that's not what God is asking at all. God is not asking a directional question. God is asking a spiritual question. Adam and God shared an intimate relationship there in the garden. Together, God and Adam had shared one with the other. God and God's creation, in God's own image, in perfect righteousness and holiness. But Adam sinned, and that relationship was broken. Righteousness and holiness no longer existed between them. And God and Adam were separated by sin. So when God asks where Adam is, God is asking, Adam, where are you? Where 
is the fellowship that we share? Adam, where are you? Where is the intimacy that we share? Adam, where are you? Where is the righteousness and holiness that was between us? Adam, where have you gone to? Adam was mistaken in thinking that he could hide from God, and so are we. We can never hide from God. God sees everything that we're doing. God can also hear everything that we say. And even beyond all of that, God can even think the thoughts that are in our head. Not only is God omnipresent for us, God's wisdom and understanding is far beyond anything that we can understand. And yet, with all of that, we're still trying to get away with things as if we could sin without God knowing. <laughs> Just as Israel did. Israel whined and stirred up all of that trouble and caused the people to reject God when God was right there, right in their very presence. Yet, they still did all of this and rejected God. And while Israel rejected God, God's desire is that we would not do the same thing. God's desire is that we would not be in the same situation. Remember, this whole series started back on Pentecost when the lectionary text was from Numbers. Back on Pentecost, I didn't intend for this to turn into a series of sermons. But after I prayed each week, this is what came out. But if you remember back on Pentecost, the text was from Numbers 11, 29, where Moses wished that God's spirit would sit or rest upon all of the people. This is what Pentecost signifies, the falling of God's spirit upon any and everyone who would receive God's spirit. I too, like Moses, wished that all of God's people, all of Mount Olive would be prophets, that God's spirit would rest upon each and every one of you, and that you would speak God's utterances. But more important than that, when God's spirit rests on you, more than just being able to see the very presence of God, as Israel did, when God's Spirit rests on you, you'll be able to feel the very presence of God moving all over you and in you. You'll be able to feel God's presence when you pray, when you spend time in stillness with God, listening to God's voice. You'll be able to Feel God's presence when you're reading God's word and God is revealing to you the meaning of that word and what it means in your life. You'll be able to feel God's presence when you worship God right there in your homes. But there's something even beyond this. You'll be able to feel God's presence while you're working, whether from home or whether you go have to go into the job when God's spirit rests on you, you'll be able to feel God's presence wherever you are. You know, you can have a frustrating day at work even when you're working from home. Mm -hmm. You can have a frustrating day at work even when you're at home on Zoom. You can have a frustrating day at work even when you have to transfer all of your office calls to your home number and your phone is ringing off the hook. 
work can be frustrating no matter where you are. And it is in those times that I want you to be able to feel God's presence and to know that in the midst of that frustration, you're still in the very presence of God. When you're at home and you're trying to work but the kids are home too, and kids are just being kids trying to play. Think about how hard it is for them during this quarantine because they may not understand why it is that they can't do all the things that they're used to do. They're at home and they're just being kids, but we're getting frustrated because they're keeping up too much noise and we're trying to work. Just take a moment and feel God's presence. Know that in the midst of this frustration, we're still in the very presence of God. And if you have to go in or if you have to go to your job and it's frustrating before COVID hit, now it's not only frustrating, but you're not sure, you're a little hesitant, maybe even afraid because you don't believe that you're getting enough protection. Even then, take a moment, stop and take a breath and feel the presence of God all over and around you. And when you can feel the presence of God, you'll know that God is with you, even in the midst of this difficult and maybe even unsafe situation. When you have to go out, even to the grocery store, and you get frustrated like I do because people aren't wearing masks and nobody is practicing social distancing and people are walking right up on you. Stop. Take a moment and feel the very presence of God within you right there in the store. When you're out and some people start acting real extra because they're asked to wear a mask. <laughs> Have you seen any of those videos? Mm -hmm. Some people can get real extra right about now or maybe these times are just revealing who they really were all along. Mm -hmm. When people start acting real extra, just stop and take a moment. Feel the very presence of God with you right there, wherever you are. Finally, there's one more thing, and it's the most important thing for you to remember. When you allow God's Spirit to rest on you, and you can feel God's Spirit in everything that you do, then you'll learn how to be able to be led by God's Spirit. And being led by God's Spirit, you will learn how not to chase your own desires as Israel did. Israel chased their own desires and it led them to chase off after silly stuff. Cucumbers, leeks, and onions silly stuff that really have no significance in themselves, but they allow those things to cause them to reject God. What I want us to learn is how to allow God's Spirit to rest on us. And in resting on us, we can learn to trust in God's Spirit. In, tr in resting on us, we will learn to rely on God's Spirit. In resting on us, we will learn to depend on God's Spirit. In resting on us, we will learn to be led by God's Spirit in every aspect of our lives. And when we have God's Spirit resting in our lives, then at any time and at any moment, we can stop and just 
feel God's Spirit moving all through us in moments of frustration, in moments of anger, in moments of disappointment, in moments of fear, in moments of uncertainty, in moments of anxiety, in moments of despair, in all of these times and all of these moments, we can stop right where we are and feel God's spirit within us. We can feel God's presence moving all over us. This is why God gives us God's spirit, for it to live within our lives such that we will always have the assurance that God's presence is always with us. Every day, in every moment of our lives, no matter where we are or who we're with, anywhere and anytime, we can feel God's Spirit all over us. And we can know not only are we in the very presence of God, but God's very presence is within us. When we allow God's Spirit to rest on us, then God's Spirit will be in us. It will guide us. It will direct us. But more importantly, it will keep us through our daily lives. Let God's Spirit rest in you. And if you let God's Spirit rest in you, you will always be in the very presence You are watching today and do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says that you can receive him right where you are. The Bible says if you would believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is God's son and was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. You can receive him now. Just open your heart and ask him to come into your life and Feel his renewing spirit as it comes into your life, even now. If you're here this morning and you need someone to pray with you, you can contact me at my email address, which is pastor at monolithinmz.net. That address is appearing on the screen. You can email me and we can pray with you. If you need counseling or any other support, you can contact me at my email address and we'll be, be able to help you with anything that we can. But we don't want you to feel as if no one is there for you at this time. You can always contact us here at Mount Olive. We pray God's blessings upon you as you go throughout this week and we pray that God's spirit will rest in you this week. Let it lead you, let it guide you, let it keep you in moments of despair in these troubled times. If you let God's Spirit rest on you, God's Spirit will lead you each and every day of your life. God bless you and we pray God's keeping upon you.